The workbench, arguably the most important tool in the workshop. The centre of most workshops, the centre of my workshop. It's where every project ends up at some point throughout its life as it travels around. But the workbench is also usually the most forgotten, ignored and definitely the most abused piece of equipment in the workshop. It definitely is in my workshop. But I intend to remedy that. I am mid-project, part way through the bourbon cabinet, but I know very shortly I'm going to need my workbench. And I really need to be able to hold things securely while I work on them. The vice is great. My little bench hook is great. But to be able to just pop a clamp in and keep the workpiece in place while I route or sand or plane would be a fantastic upgrade. So I'm going to clean the top down, give it a good old sanding. I might even apply a coat of finish. I'm not sure yet. It's never had one before, but we'll see. And then I'm going to use this little gem. The UJK Parf Mark II guide system. Let's see what's inside. Always exciting opening a new box of tools. And what a joy to see a nice shiny tool. That's very shiny. Lovely colour. I think it matches my hair. Well, I've checked the component listing and everything appears to be present and correct. Does, on first impressions, does seem to be extremely well manufactured. So my first job is to clean the top of the bench, give it a jolly good sanding, probably to 180 grit, if for no other reason than to make it easier to see where I'm going to lay everything out to. So I'm sanded to 180 and my bench is looking or my bench top is looking quite respectable again. Rather pleased with that. There are some uh, signs of usage and abuse on the top but they'll have to stay. I'm not prepared to take off that much material to get rid of a few digs and knocks and it's not as if it's a tabletop, it is a bench. So I've read the manual, I know, shock horror. Um, and it's really quite easy to follow. Lots of lovely pictures and we like pictures. Now the layout, I need to be quite careful as I've got a support rail there, there and there underneath and my bench top <clears throat> is screwed down because as I said earlier, I didn't really um, take a lot of time and trouble when I assembled it. So I need to make sure that my dog holes are either side of these rails where I can. Now I can either avoid these two or the end two. And I think I'll avoid the end two. The middle is easier for me to deal with if I need to nidge a piece across a wee bit. I've paralleled the first rail to the edge of the bench as per the book and I've also made sure that this will work out well as I've a support rail there and a support rail here. So I've got my last hole will be approximately there. So it's all looking rather good. So my next job is to clamp this rail down and then drill holes at either end. Three mil holes to start. 
the 20 mil holes apparently come later in the system. So I've set one of my pocket rules to the width in from the end I need to come. And I've set the other pocket rule to the depth in from the back. Clamps are deep enough. Now this is the three mil drill bit guide. So that locates in the little hole there somewhere, there. Then that goes down through, ensuring everything's perfect. That's my first row of holes drilled, remembering to avoid the middle rail. So the book says next to release that rail. They certainly fit well. And to place this rail with using hole zero in drill hole six. One, two, three, four, five, six. M sa. And this rail into hole zero. And then making sure they are both properly located. And then they should meet at hole 10. No, they meet at hole 10 on the hypotenuse and 8 on the right angle. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Who's a silly boy? That looks a little better. And they even supply a connecting pin just in case as is with mine holes 10 and 8 meet off of the bench and look at that a right angle don't you love it when a plan comes together next are the holes in the right angle piece The next step, as per the Book of Worms, is to repeat the very same process on the other end. So proof of the pudding will be if this rail fits in between these two holes, I've done it properly. And if I haven't, you'll probably never see this video. Here goes. Apprehensive? Not at all. Absolutely a beautiful. Fabulous. Next, I'm going to extend these through to the end so that I've got, well, maximum potential for clamping. 
So that's all my layout drills, holes drilled rather. So next, bit of a laborious bit, placing this in each one of the two guide rows of holes and drilling the middle ones, but there aren't that many, so it shouldn't take too long. See you in a bit. All of my line-up holes and locating holes are drilled and I'm ready for step two, which is to use this beautifully coloured and shiny copper, copper coloured top, well I used to be a copper coloured top, to drill the 20 mil holes. Now this 20 mil bit locates into the guide bush first and they supply a stop collar so and as per the book or as the book says so it doesn't fall out the drill it's a shame it's got to stay in there and you've got to either clumsily handle it around to the next one or detach the drill but hmm, i'm not sure what other way they could do it So the guide pin fits into the three mil holes that I've been drilling. And then the other one into another hole. And the 20 mil bit has a three mil uh, protrusion on the bottom. So it also locates into the hole. And then you drill your 20 mil hole. I've drilled all of the three mil holes but I don't necessarily want that many dog holes in my bench. So I need to decide where I actually do want dog holes to. I must apologize for the changing light conditions. The sun keeps pouring in through the open door of the workshop and it's really quite warm and lovely here in Cornwall but the light changes so it, it's a dreadful cross I must bear. Anyway I've decided to be a little cautious unusually for me to begin with. I usually end up clamping something at that end of the bench so I'm gonna put half a dozen dog holes in that end and I'm gonna put half a dozen in the middle and I'm gonna leave it at that for the minute I'm sure others will be added in a very short period of time, but to begin with, let's proceed with caution, as once the hole is drilled, as you know, it's rather difficult to fill it in again. Well, I've ended up going with a row of dog holes here and here and down there. This end, I mainly plan on using my rail saw on, but I can obviously also clamp. And this end, I've got clamping holes pre-drilled ready for use. And wow. I feel like I've just got a brand new bench. Now, time for a spot of finish. Now that is potentially controversial. And I know there have been many a video released on YouTube about that very subject. Well, it's my workshop. 
my bench. I choose, pause for effect, Danish oil. I chose Danish oil because it's relatively easy to apply. Well, it's very easy to apply. It's very easy to reapply. It's not going to leave the surface slippery smooth so my work pieces skid all over the place, which I really don't want. Therefore, I believe it's the perfect finish. If you have another opinion, please let me know below. And of course, if it turns out to be the wrong finish, it'll be relatively easy to remove. So, all points covered. So just so I don't have to manhandle the tin, I've got an amount of Danish oil here in a Bramwell's Red Hot Buffalo Wings container. Mm. Makes you fancy a few wings, doesn't it? My bench upgrade is complete. I gave it a single coat of Danish oil. It's smooth enough at that, I think. I may even give it a light rub over with a bit of sandpaper just to get rid of that super silky smooth finish, which normally on a project you'd love, wouldn't you? Clamps at one end, cutting at the other, and or clamping. It's fantastic. I should have done it months, years ago. The system itself, let me talk about that just for a few minutes, is superb in as much as the result of using it is exactly what you'd want. That added ability to clamp on the bench or to cut 90 degree cuts. A couple of points about it that I'm, I think could be improved the numbering on the holes that you use to create the uh, three mil guide holes is wearing out already after a single usage so um, they could have really been etched in i think would have made the product better and also the biggest point is getting these to fully locate in those holes because they're extremely precise uh, was just a nightmare so if there was a little bevel there and there so that it kind of self-located that would be a major improvement in my opinion but that being said it did what it was supposed to and i'm really very very pleased i do have all of the layout holes in my bench but there are three mil holes and I don't believe they're going to cause me a problem, even though I've got a drawer underneath that's now got the ability to catch sawdust through these. But at least at some point in the future, whenever I need to, I can add more dog holes. I will desperately try and resist the urge to just add a dog hole as I feel that I need it. I think it needs to be controlled in some way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and what ended up as being a review on the um, UJK dog hole system. I look forward to using my new improved workbench. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ta-ra.